Okay, so I'll get started. Obviously, we might have a few more drop in as, as we go, but uh, thanks very much, everyone, for coming along to No Code Northeast again. Well, again, for those who have been before, and, and welcome to those who have never been before. Um, we do jump between, so last, last month was actually an in person um, over at, uh, at Tusk Park uh, with Ben. Hi, Ben. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so we jump between them because uh, both because some things for, uh, suit, uh, suit uh, an online format better, but also hopefully to, to mean that more people can get engaged depending on on the preference, as it were, uh, in terms of, of, of uh, in-person and, uh, and, and remote. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, if it's all right, give you a bit. My name's Adam. So I set up No Code Northeast uh, as part of my role at Sunderland Software City. Um, who back uh, back what we're doing. Um, and uh, if it's all right, I'm just going to give you a bit of an insight into, into what we're working on because we've got some pretty exciting things that go beyond just just the meetup, as it were, um, although uh, as valuable as, a, as, as we, I think we find the meet and the meetups are. So I'll give you a bit of an insight into that. Um, uh, George is going to introduce the Digital Pathfinders programme briefly, um, and then we'll hand over to Tom, um, who's going to talk about No Code for Good. Uh, in 90 minutes, <laughs> probably shorter than that, right? But uh, going for the quick baity title. Um, cool. So um, this is what we're working on at the moment. So we've got various areas of of, of what we're doing it with no code in the region. Um, we've got no code northeast, uh, no code launchpad, no code incubator, and no code arcade. I'm going to talk a bit about each one, so um, you don't need to digest everything that's on that slide. But um, Obviously, the meetups that we've got, uh, uh, you, you obviously familiar with because you're here. And um, this is the the meetups we've we've had and are having between now and, and January. We have got uh, so um, uh, I'm just waiting on a on a confirmation of a speaker. Uh, I think Gavin was it you was this, was it you that we were talking about bubble? Uh, yeah, um, I mentioned it, but I don't think I'm qualified exactly. to speak on it. No, no. So I'm I'm speaking with someone hopefully from from uh, um, the hundred days no code uh, community to that will join us next month to talk about bubble. So we'll do a bit of a. Uh, I'd love to call it a deep dive with bubble, but from my understanding, in in an hour and a half or so, or uh, however long it is, it'll be very much a scratching of the surface. Um, but it has been called for by a lot of people, and therefore uh, I think it'd be great to get a bit of an overview from someone who knows bubble. And then we'll we'll look at what options there are through the incubator, which we'll talk about in a second to to look at more deep dive stuff in in, in bubble uh, as we go along. If there's if there's uh, sort of demand there, um, we've got uh, uh, Matthew, who's the, one of the founders of Whale Sync, uh, which is a new no code whale uh, no code whale tool, no code sync tool. Um, which uh, uh, so he's the founder of that, and he's going to talk a bit about the state of no code data sync in general um, at the moment. Um, but also he's going to talk a bit about his his uh, experience of being a no code founder and, and what how he's found how he's found that and they've they've been through a raise recently in various other bits and bobs. So I think that'll be a super interesting talk in December. Uh, and then we're back back in January and we're going to look at Stacker and Airtable. Um, uh, Airtable in particular, obviously a, a lot of people are, are interested in. Um, uh, that's going to actually be me doing that one. Uh, and I'm going to go. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll have someone from the Stacker community as well to to talk through how you can basically use Stacker to put a bit of a, um, a kind of front end onto, onto the glory that is Airtable. Um, so that's all we've got lined up till January. We've got um, spaces after that. <laughs> so it's a little way off, but if you've got any interesting stuff that you think you would want to talk about, any of you, then please do. We, I would really love it if we could have uh, um, uh, you know some local talks uh, and get local no coders um, involved. So. Um, just get in touch. Um, my details will be at the end of this uh, uh, um, presentation, but yeah, I'm sure you'll all find us anyway through the various channels. Um, no code launchpad, we're going to launch very soon in the next week or two, which is basically going to be a, a, a web page with a few, um, uh, a few attached uh, um, pages on it uh, uh, within the no code northeast structure. And that'll primarily be looking at um, having something online for the northeast when I'm having so many conversations about no code, but the first question always is, what is no code? Or and if once I've got it, then it's kind of where do I get started? So the idea of no code launchpad is just to have a space where we can point people and say, look, this is where you can get started. So we'll have a showcase of local no code companies 
signposts into to, um, uh, different communities that are out there that where you can uh, learn more about no code um, and uh, uh, yeah um, various various different uh, links in there to give people an idea of where to go to start off with no code incubator um, we've got our first uh, boot camp I think we're calling it um, again that I'll be delivering with again with Ben um, through November and early December, um, looking at uh, how to build a website and apps with, with without code. Um, we're taking the approach that it's not all about the tools and we think it's really important that when you're looking at setting up a, a website or, a, or, a, or an app, um, that the attention is paid to the process that you kind of need to go through. So, so the first three sessions are actually um, uh, based around user stories, user journeys, looking at what it is that your users need, what what you need to do um, before you start building your website uh, and, and looking at your value proposition and what have you. Um, and then we've got two sessions, one about um, uh, uh, the various options that are out there for, for no-code websites and the various options that are out there for no-code apps. Um, if you're interested in that, again, give us a shout, but obviously it'll go out on the mailing list. So if you're not part of the community, sign up on the website. Uh, we're developing a partnership with 100 Days of No Code, so we'll hopefully have some other boot camps and various other things um, that they're working on. We also get, um, I've mentioned it on the Slack channel, but if anyone is interested in the learning no code, um, there's a 30 day uh, boot camp that 100 Days of No Code are running starting at the start of November. Um, and we get a discount uh, due to the partnership we've got. So if anyone's interested in that, um, again, let me know. Ben, do you want to, sorry, I'm totally putting you on the spot here. Do you want to give like a one minute intro as to what that is? Because you've just come off one, haven't you? Yeah, sure. Yes, I've just come off one. Um, so I did it throughout September. Um, so yeah, it's just as name on tin, 30 days. Um, it's pretty intense, but lots of learning. Um, starting off with week one, which is kind of navigating, understanding the landscape of all the different tools that are out there. Week two, you then start like um, doing different tasks. So um, it's very similar to the, the newsletter which goes out, which is you know hundred days where it's a little challenges, but it's just basically that, but just thrown in a, little, a lot more intensely. Um, so it's uh, typically it's three live sessions a night, um, and then the two days in between that is kind of assignments where you've got like tasks to work on. Um, so whether that's like doing like an actual like making something with an awkward tool or whether that's like just reading background reading or watching videos. Um, and the whole point of it is that by the end of the 30 days, you're, you're hopefully launching MVP or a very basic uh, product type of thing based on the, the tech stack that you choose. So, um, but yeah, I'd highly recommend it. Really, really good, really supportive community. Um, you're on like a cohort with other people who let you kind of support each other, but they've got like a really supportive team as well of people who are like the, the checking with you almost daily on Slack, like, so, you know, how are you getting on? Do you need help with anything? So, um, yeah, it's a really good program. I would recommend it. Cheers, Ben. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that one really is focused on the idea that you've got an idea um, uh, and that you've got something that you would like to try and try and build, or at least I think you'll get the most out of it, if that's the case, that's fair to say, Ben. It's very much intensive. Um, yeah. Normally costs 700. Sorry, go on. I was going to say, yes, there is a bit where even through it, I think uh, week three, they the do like a, uh, a segment which is all about identifying problems and then th like so even if you don't have an idea they do have like discovery and okay. um, lots of stuff but yeah ideation so there's like some good resource on that but most like 95 percent of the people who i did it with kind of already joined on with an idea yeah i think it does kind of help so um yeah, it's, yeah. it's international as well there's a, there's a um people from all over the world so it's interesting yeah. stuff um as i say we get a discount i think we get it down from 750 quid to about 350 quid so it's a decent a decent discount so if anyone's interested give me a shout um sorry just going back uh we're also talking to no code schools which uh, is part of 100 days no code um to look at uh, classroom activities and also it's got some interesting uh, potential that's happening with um getting no code into universities and also to further education uh, um, uh, to colleges in the region. Um, and we're doing something around T-levels and, and getting T-level students into to, to using no code, which also know no code labs based in Sunderland are, are doing as well. So really cool stuff there as well, um, early days. Uh, but if anyone's interested in that kind of stuff, give us a shout um, and, uh, and, and we can talk about it. And the last one, which has developed significantly since uh, since uh, we, we we first had the idea, is No Code Arcade, and this is the idea to um, 
to deliver a no-code conference in the Northeast. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's certainly not uh, um, uh, signed off just yet, but it's looking pretty good uh, that we'll be doing this in June next year, uh, possibly in uh, early July, but uh, uh, mid-June to early July. The concept of no-code arcade is that we all probably know who anyone who's had a go in no-code no code is that the starting point generally is just getting in there and playing around with stuff. Um, so the concept of the no-code arcade is that we'll have uh, two different what we call an arcade spaces, with one of which would be around providers. Uh, so the tools, the platforms, go and trying out the, the platforms um, uh, that are out there and we'll have sponsors and, and people uh, exhibiting and what have you there. But then also having a developer arcade, which will be uh, focused around actually um, making time around the conference to, to build things. We'll have themed days uh, around, around things that uh, people can uh, build, um, but also give people who have been building things an opportunity to show off the apps and the, and the tools and the systems that they've, that they've, uh, that they've built. Um, so, uh, and then we'll have a, a one-track conference um, uh, over two days um uh, in the midst of all of that so we're hoping it'll be like a really thriving uh um uh, uh, space for, for anyone who's interested in no code to, to to join if they're a starter but also to get the no code community from across the uk up to the northeast and have a jolly good time um i'll hopefully we'll hopefully be able to announce that uh specific dates venues and all that kind of stuff hopefully fingers crossed uh, by the end of this month uh, or, or mid mid, uh, hopefully by late mid November. Um, again, if you're interested in that, give us a shout. Once we get it out there, we'll want to gauge interest pretty quick in terms of ticket sales, that kind of thing. So um, we'll uh, we'll 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 hope for your uh, support in that. Um, one last thing from me before uh, I hand over, just for uh, a couple of minutes for for Georgia to give an introduction to digital pathfinders. Um, we want to host a, a breakfast roundtable. We set the date, um, venue to be confirmed. Um, we're going to reach out to a few people uh, that we know of around the region as well. But um, if this is something that would interest you, we're going to have a breakfast um, uh, session, basically looking at how no code is, is affecting the wider software industry. And we're hoping that we'll have people there that are, um, uh, you know, uh, mad passionate about um, about no code, using it every day. We hope we'll have people who are just discovering what no code could and, and might do for them. And we hope we'll have also people who who are not convinced or or, or could be skeptical still about no code to talk to us about how people across the region are really feeling about no code and where we think it could go and what we could do with it in the region. Um, so so we we've, we've gone with the. Uh, <laughs> With the uh, clickbaity title to some extent, uh, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try and make that one a, a, a you know really get a, a wide range of people to have that conversation, and um, just start to get a feel for for for, for where people are at um, across the region. So that is me. Um, I will just hand over to so this today's. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to do a quick intro. A, Tom in a minute, but um, uh, today's session is in partnership with Digital Pathfinders. Um, and uh, I'm going to hand over to Georgia just to do a quick couple of minutes intro, uh, intro into, into what Digital Pathfinders is so everyone knows. Over to you, Georgia. Uh, I don't have any slides or anything. Um, so hi, everyone. Right. I'm Georgia Gonsalves, and I'm the Partnerships and Projects Officer at the Voluntary Organisations Network Northeast, VON for short, if you've not heard of us before. Um, so we're one of the delivery partners for Digital Pathfinders, along with Sunderland Software City and Generator. Um, so Digital Pathfinders is a cross-sectoral programme which is funded by North of Time Combined Authority, Digital Catapult and the National Lottery Community Fund. And it supports organisations based in Northumberland, North Tyneside and Newcastle to adopt new digital technology. So we do this through a variety of different events which focus on different aspects of digital and we also provide up to 12 hours of bespoke, fully funded and really flexible one-to-one -one support with digital experts. And we work with some really great experts, including Tom, who's here, and also William, who's here as well. Um, so yeah, if you want to receive any of the support from the programme, then all you'll need to do is register. And if you've got any particular questions or want to have a bit of a chat about the programme, um, Adam, if you could just share my email and the registration link in the follow-up mailing, then yeah, that's pretty much everything from me. <laughs> Real thanks, Georgia. Yeah, and that's open to to voluntary sector, but also to to um, uh, 
uh, SMEs and, and anyone basically working digital, uh, not working digital, so anyone who wants to work in digital. Um, right, thank you very much. Uh, before we get into talks, anyone got any questions about all that or want to say anything? No, nope. all good. Um, so without further ado, uh, I will hand over to Tom, who will tell you more about himself. But uh, um, I met Tom. Well, I, actually, Tom, have we even met in person? I don't think we have, have we? Not yet. No. Anyway, met Tom at various uh, tech, tech for Good and, and uh, uh, um, uh, pro project and uh, uh, and events. And uh, Tom's been using no code for for ages. So he's uh, here with, I think, with some colleagues if they've arrived um, Bobby. but uh, Bobby hi Bobby um, so yeah I'm gonna hand over to, to Tom to tell us about uh, his experience with no code for good thanks Tom thanks Adam um, yeah it's really strange I've, I'm, I'm unsure if I've ever met anybody in real life anymore it's kind of weird uh, so uh, thanks thanks Adam um, yeah um, I've, I mentioned uh, Adam mentioned that Bobby uh, Bobby down the bottom give him away Bobby I've asked Bobby to come along. Um, I work with Bobby um, on a few different things and um, I wanted to get kind of Bobby to come along and give a bit more perspective on some of the things she's done with no code with um, organisations. So um, I'm conscious that Bobby needs to disappear at uh, 6.45. So I'm going to do a little bit and I'm going to hand over to Bobby. Uh, she'll do her bit and then come back to me and then we'll, we'll kind of finish off from there if that's okay, Bobby. Are you okay with that? Cool. Uh, right, I'm just going to do a, a few uh, slides to start with. I don't know, um, and we'll we'll see where we go from from there. Um, so, very quickly, this is no code northeast. Uh, no code, no code for good. Um, this is me. Uh, I always like to do this one. So, on the left hand side. Um, depending on which way you're looking at it, is work me with my official photograph where I'm trying to look all serious. Uh, on the right is me when I'm running, which is what I like to do in most of my spare time. Go running in the hills and then come back and eat some pizza, uh, generally. Um, I do a lot of uh, stuff with organisations in digital. I do a lot around data as well. And then I do some broader kind of stra strategic things as well. Um, my contact details are on there, Twitter, uh, my website, Medium, probably won't get much on there, but there's occasional a few bits on there. Uh, there's a good data site. Um, I'll show you a little bit about that in a moment. And then there's the Open Makers community, which is about kind of using no code for, for kind of good, basically. Um, what I'm going to do is talk about where did I begin in no code? I just give a bit of context of why it kind of, how I started in this, um, in, in this space. Then I'm going to hand over to Bobby to talk about her experience with some organisations, and then I'll do a bit of a talk about some of my experience with organisations with some examples. Um, so um, where did I start with no code? Uh, for me, like most things, it starts with a problem. Um, and in this case, um, I was getting asked a lot of times by so many different organisations, can you help me with my CRM? Um, and one of the one of the things that kept coming to me, and I had this discussion with another one of my uh, colleagues and friends, also called Tom. We kept we were kind of we'd get together on a Friday and go, "What are you working on? What what's kind of you know bugging you?" And we have these kind of uh, freelancers just kind of shouting at each other, going, "What what are we working on?" Um, and one of the things was, "Oh, can you help us with our CRM? We do we, we do a lot of stuff with data, and this CRM problem kept coming up." And it wasn't, you know, it, you know, this wasn't about um, kind of, can we, can we, uh, can you help me with one specific CRM? There's lots of different CRMs um, out there, and some of them were um, some were good, and some of them were better. And but one of the problems that kept coming to me was, I keep getting asked this. I don't have time to really help everybody with their CRM. It's not really my job, and a bit of frustration. So. One day we kind of got together and thought, can we make something that is basic? You know, it's not going to solve everybody's problems. That does a lot of what people need, but can be adapted by them potentially. Okay. And that was the big key for me was about, can it be something that opens the lid a little bit, that lifts the, the veil, removes the veil from people around what a CRM does. Uh, and what, 
we eventually did, we spent um, a couple of hours on a Friday afternoon and put together something called our uh, Tom and Tom Simple CRM. And basically we got, we took Airtable, built a CRM um, in that, which was designed for small charities, basically. Uh, put it together, posted it up, gave it away for free. You know, so there's templates and Airtable template, it's not perfect, uh, but it was a starting point. And what we also said when we were doing that was, have a look at it, see what you think. And if you want to talk to us about it, we're happy to talk to you about it. Uh, you know, you give these things away, you never know what's going to happen. Um, I've talked to around about 50 organisations now who took this and went, oh, this is great. What can I do with it? And I've talked to organisations in the Northeast and across England. I've talked to some uh, people over in California who are doing some community-based uh, kind of community-based project. Unfortunately, they did not pay for airfare over there. This was all on Zoom. Um, but what was quite interesting for me was lots of people kind of saw something interesting in being able to adapt it themselves and play with something. So that was my first starting point within, within um, no code was, was Airtable. Um, you'll see probably from some of the things I do, I use Airtable quite a lot, I like it, uh, but it was the first starting point for me. And where did it go from there? Uh, more problems, more no code. Um, another thing that kept coming up, where do we keep our information and how do we onboard people? Charities, social enterprises, et cetera. Staff turnover can be quite um, big. And sometimes for, you know, people have the best intentions, but finding where they keep their, all their documentation, finding where they keep all their kind of uh, how-to guides, et cetera, for an organization quite often gets lost. Um, so, I, so I kind of wondered, was there something else I could do to put, um, put something in place that people could use? Um, so can I build something that keeps people uh, information about their organization in a structured way? Um, and so I built something called the Organizational Handbook in Notion. And basically it's a whole series of kind of databases and templates built within um, Notion, which gives people a structured way and a guide for them to maintain uh, information in a, in a structured way. And again, gave that away for free said can people you know do people want to use it let's have a conversation and that's been uh, taken by about 20 or 30 organizations and again adapted a little bit for their own needs and then i started solving my own problems okay so i'm a you know i run my own business and i and i kind of support lots of different people what was my own problems um how do i keep track of my time and get paid easily Bit of a problem that I had. So at one point I was using um, one of the time tracking tools, but it was really a bit of a pain in the, pain in the backside because I could track my own time. Um, and I'm not going to tell you which, uh, well, it was called Harvest anyway. Um, say I wasn't going to say it, but I was using Harvest and it's good. It does some good things. But one of the things that I really struggled with it was is that I needed to be able to send an invoice which broke down my time against lots of different things, not just one chunk of time against a project. It needed to break it down and it needed to break it down, not just in the invoice, but on a spreadsheet as well. OK, and the amount of time I used to spend just going back and forth of exporting it out of Harvest into zero, out of zero into Excel, onto an Excel spreadsheet, sending that over, then sending the invoice. And I thought there's got to be a better way than this. And bear in mind, I was paying for Harvest as well. So I was paying about £15 a month to do that just to get annoyed. So I thought there must be a better way than this. Well, I already used Google Calendar. I already used Zero for accounts and invoices. Something's got to be possible there. Um, so can I make, use something in between to make my life easier? And the answer was yes. I used Google Calendar. I had zero. I basically built a bit of an integration between Google Calendar using Zapier into Airtable into um, zero. There was an extra step which did the bit of taking that exact invoice into an Excel spreadsheet as well and emailing it to the, to the client. And so that thing 
just really kind of opened up my eyes to how you can solve back office problems for a lot of uh, organizations saving that time of moving information uh, from one place to another and so this was uh, for me was a, a real kind of eye-opener I'd kind of done the the, the CRM side of things I've, I've done a kind of uh, notion but it was that movement of things between different places and using what people already had to, to move that information and make life easy for people so one thing I want, want to kind of always say with this is no code isn't, you know, it's not the be all and end all of everything. It's the right tool for, for the job at the time. And I always start with trying to solve problems. What is the problem you're trying to solve? You'll notice on each of these, there's a problem I'm trying to solve. There's a question I'm trying to answer. And if you can answer that using something else other than the no code, do that. But where no code comes in is it can help with some of these things and it's not perfect but it is you know i find it really uh, pretty good for doing a lot of these things right i'm going to stop sharing for now before i go into examples of organizations who've used no code uh, but i just want to give you a bit of a background on uh, my own kind of use of no code and where i where i came from and um, what i'm going to do now is hand over to bobby Bobby, say hello. Hi everyone, I'm Bobby. Um, I've, I'm sorry, I don't have a presentation. Um, Tom asked me to do this last night. So um, I've been busy doing, building a no-code project management system for uh, a charity in South Africa today, um, most, mostly using Airtable. Um, so just let's start with that one. So the, they're, um, they're a very project-based organization. They deliver training across the continent um, and for each of their training they have 32 tasks that different people in the team need to do um, so what I've done is I've used Airtable and the automations of Airtable to essentially say when when a new project is ready to be assigned send add all of these individual tasks assign them to the individual that it's meant to be for and then we're using a small little formula to to essentially look at when the activity date is happening and do it 84 days before or seven days after that event. So keeping it really quite simple with that and, and just using automations to try and kind of create a bank of lists. That means that if the tasks change for any reason, they can change them and edit them very easily and just go straight in and do that. Um, a couple of months ago, um, again, working with Tom this time, actually, on a, a project with um, a community organisation in Wolverhampton, uh, they approached us and basically said, we want to create a Shopify account. We want to sell things online. So going back to the problem, we'd spent a bit of time just really kind of working out what it was that they wanted to do. And in essence, all they wanted to do was people to, they own a, a wood recycling centre. They make small items occasionally out of that. And they also ask members of the community to order bespoke items. So they just wanted to be able to have a way for people to simply order things online. So in that instance, we use Typeform um, and connected up a few different Typeforms as well, because there was lots of different options um, and then connected that up to Stripe as well. So that saved the organization probably about £7,000 if you take out of all the developer costs. And it was an afternoon where we had a load of sweets, had a few cups of tea and coffee and enjoyed ourselves. And, you know, they, they now have a new skill where they can think about things logically. And the great thing with Typeform is it showed them like a visual map of the flow of where everything was um so that was really really helpful for them and then just kind of use it on a big scale during the pandemic i was working at one of the uk's largest unions and one of the challenges that they had was they needed to find a way to make sure that their reps could support um, their union members in health and safety checks so back in the day when you, the offices were open, someone would go in and get a, a physical 
health and safety checklist, which took them through the, the five steps from the health and safety executive. And now what they needed was a way to be able to go around, but on a phone. So we used type form again um, to ask simple questions. Has has there been um, adjustments based on COVID to make sure that the windows are open? If no, what what needs to be made? And then in the answer to all of this, we kind of we used another tool called DocuPilot to create essentially a PDF so that there was a physical document um, and evidence of how it was then, so that then the union rep could go into the business and the organisation and say, look. These are the things that we need to change. These are the things that we need to address. And then two months later, three months later, they can go and redo it again. And then there's a, a log of how things have maybe improved or not. Um, but my kind of background with, yeah, my background with no code kind of began really before I knew it was no code. So I've been doing no code stuff pretty much since I can rem like since I started using a computer mm. I've been connecting things and making things work um you know from using Canva as a design tool to um using Calendly um to get people to book things with like book meetings and I think that's where the the positives of NoCo come through the most um talking to a, a tiny social enterprise up in um, the Northeast a couple of weeks ago, they just really wanted a way to, for people to book access to their, to their space that they rent out. And they were saying, but, but we're gonna really struggle to do this because we don't have the admin time. We just can't, we're, we're one person, we're volunteers, we can't really do this. Um, so by setting up this Calendly offer, what they'll be able to do is allow people to book in where they don't already have bookings because you can sync it up with a bookings calendar and a calendar that you manage. And then if that one person that's mostly in charge of things isn't available, they can ask for a volunteer to come and open up. And then it makes it a lot quicker and easier. And then you can also sync that up to email, send a little Stripe link, and then you've got synchronizing the payment as well afterwards. So the more that you kind of play with no code, the more you can sync things up. The one thing that I have noticed it's like a bit of a downfall is sometimes people go a bit no code happy and then they don't really know what's going on um so with that it's it's so important to document it um so like with Airtable for each different table you can describe what's going on on that table for every field you can describe what the use of that field's for for every part of your automation you can describe the bit that happens but also the group of activity that's happening so with that charity in south africa there's six different role types for all of the projects that they work on so i've got groups of activities for the project coordinator role and then each of those individual tasks the description is the task that has to be done so that everyone knows what they're looking at and they're not just affronted by a whole load of create records that they don't that they can't read and can't can't engage with. Super, thanks, Bobby. Um, and I think that for me is uh, one of the kind of yeah one of the really important parts of kind of no code. Two two things Bobby mentioned there is that kind of you can go a bit no code happy, and that's you know this. And I'm going to show you kind of one of my. Uh, resources that I keep adding to, which is kind of 750, a list of 750 no-code tools. Um, and, you know, you could sit there all day and just play with them, you know, and that's great. But it's, again, it's the right tool for the right job. And that documentation thing is, is something that um, myself and Bobby come across is sometimes people want to move fast and they want to put things in place and you can do that with no-code. Um, but, you know, re still some of those good practice about okay yes you can move fast but what if what about somebody else who's following on behind you so if you come into an organization um what's there if you come in as a, another developer how do i know what's happened here do i have to unpick a full air table and go how have you done this what does you what does this automation do yes i can figure it out because I, I 
understand automations, but it's nicer if there's documentation there that tells you what's happening. So again, it's not, I think some of the challenge with no code is, is that yes, move fast, but still keep the same principles. And Bobby, you know, Bobby um, kind of, do you want to give kind of a, what you do outside of just some of this no code stuff, Bobby? Because Bobby isn't just no coder and, and really takes on this kind of principle of, of good digital and, and good, you know, service design as well. And, and that kind of side of things, I think that's really important to kind of have as, have as well alongside doing the no code stuff. Yeah, so back in 2019, I set up a, a training organization called Be More Digital. And the idea of that is to um, teach the practical ways of, of improving your, your digital expertise and um, how to put these digital ways of working into practice. So we I run, um, we now, there's more of us than just me. Um, we run sessions from anything from, you know, social media. Um, we were approached the other day with, a, um, can we have a workshop that shows us innovative and creative ways of, of connecting with an audience? And um, they didn't quite get that list that they were expecting of do this, try this competition or, or things like that. They had a, a 90 minute, user research session essentially to to get people to start thinking about who their audience are do who do they already know what are they already engaging with what works what doesn't you know and just trying to map that out um so that then they can improve and continually improve and do that kind of problem solving iterative journey um and last week i was up in scotland a uh, scottish refugee council and um teaching them very, very basic prioritization methods to help them as a team work better together. Um, they were finding themselves really struggling with overwhelm as a communications team. They've got a lot on their plate. So um, taught them some very basic kind of matrix decision making tools, but also started to take them through the idea of forming habits um, to help them them through and help them improve their ways of working um so i will just share a little link to the new website that i've finally gone live with um yes it is that one be more dot digital thank you <laughs> um yeah if you notice any dodgy links or broken things um please do just use the email me button and tell me about it because it's I, I kind of just had a ADHD. I'm fed up of testing this moment and just went live. So um, there's probably a few things wrong with it. Um, but yeah, this this is a, a low code site. It's not a no code site. So it's on WordPress. Um, but I I would put WordPress now if you use kind of a a host like GoDaddy. They offer a kind of managed WordPress system. And now you've got the blocks on WordPress. It's it's fairly no code rather than low code. Um, so yeah, if you want, um, that's another no code example for you. <laughs> Super, thank you, Bobby. Um, uh, just want to say thanks to Bobby for jumping in on this um, to to kind of give me some give us some different examples. Bobby, um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. If there's anything you want me to send out to anybody, uh, please uh, just email me and I'll I'll send it out to everybody. But uh, thank you, Bobby. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for having me. See you soon um super so um that was just kind of some uh, i just want to not just have my voice in in this room because it's not just me doing these types of things but i think bobby's kind of points around you know um using the right again using the right tool but doing it properly don't just kind of you know say you're a no coder and not follow kind of some of the really good principles behind um digital and behind design um i'm going to jump back to um uh, some other bits I was about to talk about before uh, Bobby jumped in. Um, so one final thing I just want to uh, share with you before I talk about um, uh, some other examples. Um, again, I had another problem that I wanted to solve um, that um, I was working on, and that was how do I make a, a website that is easy to update? really quick to get out there and not just for me to update i was making it as a communal resource so it's um it's, it's called good data.co.uk 
one of the problems I was trying to solve was that um, lots of voluntary and community organizations really struggle with trying to find uh, data that's already out there, links, um, people to help them with data. And I wanted to make a, a, a bit of a community resource. You, you saw earlier on, I'd already used Notion to um, put together a, a bit of a toolkit, an organizational um, toolkit. And so I thought, well, I'm already in Notion. Can I use something that takes what I put in Notion and put it up as a web page? I could have just shared a, a Notion page, that's fine. But I wanted to make something a, a little bit different and, and test myself. And so basically using Notion, uh, Tally Forms to um, have an input. So Tally Forms connects directly to Notion so that people can contribute resources themselves directly into the Notion, which then goes to the web page. Um, and this is a, a view of that web page. Um, basically, it's a whole list of different resources. And I'll, um, I'll basically just show you the, the website now. Um, and this was all put together in Notion in really short space of time. Um, and basically within it, it has a whole list of kind of um, data sources that people can, can kind of get to. Um, one of the good things with making it into um, a website, and in this case, I used uh, uh, Cloudflare to get it from um, Notion into a web page. So it actually directs to gooddata.co.uk, which helps with people being able to find it a little bit easier than a, than a Notion page. Um, I also use Notion for my own website, The Good Ship. Uh, that is using uh, Notion and something called Super, which allows you to take a Notion page and put it into um, a, a, a web page. And that's a little bit simpler and very much on the no code, as opposed to uh, cloud using Cloudflare uh, workers, which requires a bit of coding. But same principle, using Notion to get uh, things from Notion really quickly into um, a, a website. And because I'm already in Notion, I can, I can do that. Um, quite easily. So I want to give uh, a couple of examples of uh, kind of others using uh, no code, not just me, organizations I've worked with. Uh, back on the map, I don't know if you've heard of them. If you haven't, they're in Sunderland, they're amazing. Um, you, should, you should really go and uh, check them out. Uh, lovely uh, community and they do a whole range of things. They've taken over a library, they have housing stock, uh, they've got shops. Um, go and check them out. Brilliant, brilliant organisation. Um, one of the things that they were trying to that they were struggling with was uh, managing their housing stock and the requests that come into them for repairs, for things that were, for are happening quite often. Um, so, how do they make bookings? How do they make repairs, etc. Bobby mentioned um, uh, Typeform. And again, this organization back on the map used Typeform effectively to start managing, uh, they integrated with something else, but Typeform was their front end to start managing um, the requests that were coming in to their housing stock. And again, this saves them so much time. And now they're going on to do more within their organization with no code uh, and with, with, with low, or low code as well um, to manage all of their systems to make them um, work more effectively. So there's one organization. Another organization not based in the Northeast, uh, they're called Good Things Collective. And Good Things Collective are based in uh, Morecambe, Morecambe Bay. They're an arts organization. Um, and uh, as in the name, it says that they are a collective. They're a collective of uh, artists who've got together and they, they uh, run a center, basically. Um, one of the things that they were really struggling with is again coming back to this question how can we manage bookings and studio space bobby mentioned an example um, with an organization using calendly so these these guys they basically had a spreadsheet and they'd take bookings and mark them off and and try to say that they were uh, they were full etc but they also wanted to explore something else as well they wanted to explore the concept of a time bank time banking idea that basically because they're a collective they want to bring uh, their members together carry out some tasks and because of those tasks 
they get assigned some kind of credits which they can use for the studio space for something else within the organization now this is an organ now the good things collective are currently like fundraising about a million pounds to take over a really big massive building in Morecambe. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to say, we're going to use a time banking idea when we get into this building. But they didn't really know where to start. They'd been quoted some uh, kind of 70, 80, 90 grand for, uh, for an app to be built for uh, to help them manage this time banking side of things. And anyway, they, they got some funding through uh, Power to Change, who work with community businesses. And I was asked to come and just speak to them to say, you know, is this a good idea you know is there another another approach and i said well let's go back to the beginning do you know if time banking will actually work have you tried this thing before before building an actual app and they kind of went well not really we don't know quite how to manage it we haven't got the time so i kind of said well can you start with something a lot smaller test it out using some no code tools and then if it works you know if, if you've got the potential that it works then maybe you know you want to either scale the no code thing up or you want to invest in in an app but don't go running headfirst into spending 70 80 thousand pounds when you're already fundraising for something else and you don't know it works and going back even further than that you can't even manage your own bookings and studio space effectively at the moment so let's start there and, and move on from there and um one of the things that was quite interesting um probably about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I don't know, something like that. Um, I came across a website called Wix. Um, and, you know, I kind of thought it was probably one of the original uh, visual development, uh, no code website builders. Uh, I didn't know it was still around. Uh, to, and they they used Wix as their website. Like I went, oh, well, interesting. And then I started delving into a bit into Wix and into the back end. And actually, they had a whole load of features that were in the back end of Wix that they didn't even know they had within their website. And it has bookings and it has uh, ability to, to take payments and all these other things. Now, I will say it is not perfect. It is still Wix at the end of the day. Um, and it is it has come a long way, but it, I would say it's still got some uh, limitations. But it has the option to have within it um, logic and it has the option to uh, call things like uh, webhooks as well. And if you don't know what a webhook is, um, I'll, I'll put some material in later on for you to, to look through. But it has the option to basically connect with other things. Not perfectly, but it can. And so what I did with them was I worked firstly to, to help them use their, their website more effectively. So it didn't cost them anything. So they still use Wix for their bookings, for their studio space, et cetera, and they can take payments. And what I did with that was I connected that to, um, to Zapier and then through to Airtable and built a, a, a trial of a time bank within Airtable which basically allows a listing of activities, allows people to be assigned to it, allows jobs to be completed and using automation to auto assign credits with an expiry date on those credits, which allows people to either spend them or lose them, et cetera, depending on when they spend them. And they're now trialing that to see, is this idea of having a time bank worthwhile? And all it's cost them to try that out is a little bit of my time, which was paid for by a, uh, a funder, and then um, a, a, a pro pro license of, of Airtable. Okay, um, so it's that ability to try things out. Now, would that Airtable and Zapier integration scale to the to the uh, level that they need it? We don't know yet, and that's why they need to try it out. So I think that's an important thing of just trying things out to see what is possible, but also moving fast with, with again, just um, the, the kind of care of figuring things out and doing good standard digital good practice along the way. Um, so those, those were a few examples I wanted to give. I could give you a whole load of things. I could sit and talk about no code for forever. Um, I did mention that um, I keep a list of um, 
no code tools um, that you might be interested in. I'll put a link in the chat. It is an Airtable view. You can scroll through that to your heart's content. It is um, categorized in memberships and CRMs and networking, etc. So I'll put that link in there. I'll also put links to um, any of the other bits and pieces that I've talked about uh, recently. Um, a lot of things I talk to organizations about involve kind of collecting data. So I also I often quite talk about uh, form tools and, and using them um, for a lot of organizations. Um, and one thing I did want to talk about, because I did start using this quite recently, if, if nobody's ever done this. Um, I use um, Fathom video to record my um, kind of interviews with people and, and, and conversations with people. And um, it's a really good tool for kind of segmenting uh, kind of conversations. But one of the really good things that I used it for was I connected it between Fathom and Coda. And what that automatically did was take the segmented videos and auto transcribed um, text and segmented it in automatically into Coda, which is another no code tool, which uh, then kind of gives you that breakdown in a data to database function. And every time I update uh, anything I'm doing in Fathom, it brings them into Coda, and then I can use that in a, uh, in a workplace. And, and a couple of organizations are, are now taking that because they do quite a lot of, of interviews, um, particularly if they're thinking about how to um, talk about their own impact. Um, they do that quite a lot. And having this ability to segment and join data it's probably quite important. Uh, I'm going to stop talking now because I've been rambling for quite a long time. Um, so I'm going to go stop. Questions? Thoughts? Want to hear more on stuff? Thanks, Tom. That was great. Learning loads already. Um, does anyone have any questions for Tom? I just blown everybody's mind. Have you seen all this? <laughs> There's yeah. one in the chat. Which is, are these tools open source? Are these the tools that I've talked about? Uh, most most of them are not open source. No. The stuff that you've put out there, Tom, though, is 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 open to access, right? So all the, all of all of your your good data and all that kind of stuff is. It's one of one of the things that's always uh, uh, impressed me as a default that that you pretty much share everything, everything that you yeah. well not everything that you do and that would be mad but you, but yeah a lot of the the output that you've got is there for people to go and to go and grab right yeah so with most of the tools with a lot of um, no code tools um, what they do is allow you to share um, templates. Um, for 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 all the things that you can you can use, so you can share templates and people can take them and adapt them themselves. So for everything I do, I always um, share the templates that, I, that I've used to build it, share them, and people can take them and adapt them. Now, are they true open source tools? No, um, that that's you know that they're not. But for the level that people are generally using, you can take um, one of the the. The kind of templates and adapt it for your own for your own use so yeah i i you know share as much as i can i wouldn't share everything because most of it would be quite boring adam but um i try to share try to share the, the good things um that that i do and i think that's one of the big things for me is that kind of uh, as i said where i started this from was trying to just lift the lid on some of the things that are happening some of the, the bits because um, you know, from a CRM point of view, I would rather, and I said this to lots of people, go and play with their table, go and figure out what you're really wanting to do. And then if you go and get a developer in to, to kind of um, build, build your CRM, super, you know, but you've, you've got an understanding. It doesn't mean you have to stick in Airtable. It's, it's about really that understanding piece for me. Um, you know, go and speak to... William and get some get get uh, something built for you. I, I don't I don't kind of um, prescribe to the view that it's just about one tool. It's about a methodology. It's about really exploring, and that's why I 
like no code, code tools uh, because they can allow you to do some of that. And I think for some of the tools, uh, Tom, it'd be fair, it, obviously they're not open source in terms of the licenses, but most of them will have some kind of free option, right? That you can that you can at least try things out with. Uh, I mean, Airtable for sure, Notion for sure. A lot of these come come with a decent a decent amount of tools for free that you can, you know, get your fingers stuck in, right? And then and then play around yeah. with. But uh, obviously they are proprietary, and, and the data is is with them. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think um, what like most of the tools that I would use, they have a free license, which will get you experimenting with it. And if you find it's useful, then you start paying for it. A lot of the tools also have a 50% uh, discount. A lot of the bigger tools have a 50% discount for uh, charities as well. Um, always check that on every single kind of no core tool. Try and find the charitable discount if you're working with it charity or you are a charity yeah i think I've, we've even had experiences where where they they have a discount but they don't actually publish it on their website so if you actually contact them then quite often you can uh, you can access that anyway so yeah, yeah. too bad is there any 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 other questions come into people's minds as we've been talking no can i ask what jack hiya Hey, sorry, I was um, eating Doritos, so I didn't really want to have <laughs> um, Just wanted to ask, if, Tom, you're doing all of this stuff open source, as it were, you know, you're saying, hey, guys, for free, you know, take, take what I've made and, and adapt it for yourself. Do you find yourself turning into kind of a customer service rep for, like, all of this stuff you're putting out? Because I think sometimes... I'm not saying that you should charge for everything you do, but there is kind of like a barrier to entry a little bit if there is a pay as a paywall and it will kind of stop the people who are just, who are like, oh, messing around with it and then asking you loads of questions that maybe you've got, like you kind of do need a level of knowledge to be able to use no code to a certain extent in some respects, like, and then you're just answering questions 24 seven I don't know. How do you feel about that? Slash, has that happened to you? Do you regret putting everything out for free? Sorry, kind of loads of questions there, but yeah. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I uh, I do charge money for things I do as well. Um, so you know, I put I put lo lots of things out there if I think it's it's worthwhile. What I will always say to people, is, I, I mentioned with the the free CRM at the beginning. I said, if you want to have a conversation about that, that's great. And I'm quite happy to give you like an hour of my time and, and talk to you about it. If you want something beyond that, and I'm quite clear with everybody, I say, if, if you want something beyond that, you want to take it and you want to do some more, here's some learnings. You can go on, look and look on Airtable. It'll give you loads of different things. And then there's 100 days of no code and all these other things. You can go and learn that. If you want something specific and custom, you know, adaptation and training on Airtable, I will have to charge and I think for me there's that level of kind of um you know that that for me is that rather than barriers barrier to entry side of things and, and making it cost at the start and putting some people off is explore and if you're willing to put a bit of time in yourself great go and do that and you know beyond that maybe you want to um if, if you want some of my time then you know I'm quite clear that I will uh need to charge eventually for something like that um but what one of the things that i was really quite interested in um, about the kind of particularly with some of the free tools is for me is the 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 learning as well and um, so i'm always asking about how are you using this how are you um wanting to develop this because you know for instance that helps me in terms of thinking about what else is needed out there? What else is needed in, in the sector? Now, don't get me wrong, I get charged, I charge people to build specific Airtable uh, builds as well. So it's, you know, part of developing my own skills, et cetera, as well. But I think, you know, you've got to be um, kind of savvy about some of these things. There's a certain level that I will give away, a certain amount of time that I will give for free. Some kind of, uh, I have to go, right, that's enough now. And if you want any more, um, you need to charge. But I do some other different bits and pieces. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Um, I do some other different bits and pieces. And that's why I think some of the stuff that 
um, Adam's doing to kind of open up this space is, is really good and why I kind of came along tonight. Great, thank you. It's a freelancers, freelancers challenge, especially if you've worked in open source, knowing when to charge and when, when not mm. to, right? It's a, yeah, yeah, it's a tricky one tricky one but i guess also i'm guessing you've probably through giving that stuff away not that that's why you've done it but you have ended up actually that that's fed your pipeline to some extent right in terms of people saying you know i've i've, I've been looking at this and, and and i need more help and therefore you've actually got business through through it has that happened or? yeah i mean strangely i never kind of tried to do this but just by doing it i kind of became one of the you know if you want some kind of no code stuff done in the, the voluntary sector, go and speak to Tom. Right, Tom. It's great. It's great, but it'd be nice if there's a few more of us doing some of this stuff as well. Um, so yes, I, I kind of it did create a pipeline, but yeah, and kind of unintentionally. Just to be clear, I mean, <coughs> mean more of you doing this in the voluntary sector or more of us in the no code space in general? I, well, I, th I think in general, I think it would be really helpful um, because I think, you know, having that ability to um, know where to where to call pe call on people. Um, Tom and Tom and Tom, see how I just love that. Yeah, one, one of the things that, um, so, so some of the things that I do, and Bobby is, is also part of this, so I'm, you know, a, a digital um, lead coach, something like that, for the, one of the Powering Ups um, digital programs. And one of the things, my role isn't to build things. My role isn't to go in and do um, no-code things with organisations, but I help them think th some things through. And if there's a no-code uh, kind of potential solution there, and they've kind of identified that, finding people who can come and do that is really difficult just in the area or just all over across across the country you know yeah. across the country being able to find people who can do that is really quite tricky now having an understanding of a community business is is really helpful mm. uh, you know understanding what they're looking at their capacity issues etc but also just being able to go you know on a procurement list, for example, I've got 10 people to choose from. I have like one, if I'm lucky, to go, well, I can pull them in, you know, and go, well, that's great. I've got a choice of one. Here's a choice of one um, for, for this piece of work. And I think having more people, um, one, just in the no-code space, fantastic, and two, more in the, the voluntary and community sector, understanding of it. Would be great you know social enterprises community businesses their businesses at the end of the day mm. they just have a social purpose and i think just having more in that space to help them would be would be really good great if, it, if it's all right actually tom I'm, I'm gonna totally hijack i'm sorry about this but this is something that's massively one of the main reasons why i wanted to do no code for good early on is actually because uh, of this lack um, of, of uh, as exactly as you say, Tom, of both. But I do, I've been working on this from a from a strategy level and been trying to, uh, I'm just going to share something quickly to see if it makes sense for people because uh, nothing like a bit of validation. But also I think maybe demonstrates what you're saying uh, um, uh, uh, there, Tom. But this is something I've been thinking about in terms of how do we get more digital people in, because again, Taken away from the no-code space, I think just about digital and voluntary sector, there's a very, there's a big kind of yeah. gap. And uh, I came up with this, um, which might not make much sense, but I will just quickly talk through it, that you've got people, so this is on the right-hand side, you've got the digital sector, on the left-hand side, you've got the, the, the voluntary sector. And in the middle here, this purple bit here, is what, there's lots of no, names for it, right, Tom? <laughs> but charity, I call it charity digital people, social tech people, there's various different ways, it's put, but people who are effectively like Tom, um, sometimes like myself and, and, and others, and, and like a lot of people who are involved in Catalyst, which is well worth looking at if this is something that interests you. People who are really working within both sectors all the time, it's like that's their, that's their, their, their thing they do. Um, and so you've got that crossover there, their, their sort of voluntary sector or charity sector or social enterprise sector knowledge and digital knowledge is, is, is high. 
Um, and then you've got the voluntary sector over here who, who know their sector, um, but they've got very little digital knowledge. And the digital people over here know their, 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 the digital stuff, but have got very little knowledge of how to, you know, how how the voluntary sector works or how best to work with voluntary organizations um and that this space here as 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 uh, in this region in particular but nationwide as well is a very small space and one of the things that, that i'm really passionate about is how do we grow that how do we how do we get more digital people understand the voluntary sector how do we get more vol uh, voluntary sector organizations understand the benefits of digital um and and i'm certainly not uh, uh the only one uh, again uh it's what tom does probably more day to day than what i do but um there is an organization as i mentioned called catalyst so if anyone's interested in it there's tons of stuff there uh, uh i think it's the catalyst.org.uk is it tom uh might be we the catalyst i, I don't know it's there's so many catalysts it's a little bit tricky to find them. but if you do a catalyst and uh charity uh, digital or something like that um but um what's really interesting there is that is that that's really what their mission is and what they're trying to do is to create that cohesion between people who know digital and people who, who know the voluntary sector so um we're we're with von and um, with georgia we're, we're um uh, we've had to postpone uh, this time but we're also looking at things like um digital trustees so how can we get more people with digital knowledge to become trustees in charities for example um but uh there's a ton of work in that space and i won't bore you all with it with it now because that's not why we're here but uh yeah if you're interested in understanding you know how you can get more involved in that then let me know because it's something that we're trying to work with we're working at the policy level as well um but also doing a bunch of projects yeah so the cat list of okay perfect cheers guys <laughs> jinx um so yeah that's uh that's i just wanted to drop that in there and apologies tom didn't mean to hijack but uh all right. So any, any other further questions? Henrik. Henrik. Okay. Uh, you you can hear me? Yeah. Uh, please bear up. Uh, my with me. Uh, my English is not my native English. Is not my native English. My native English, as you hear, probably is uh, German. So um, I would like to add some things because I was cu very curious about your uh, session. Uh, I'm from Berlin. So people think, oh, Berlin, that's the place to be. Uh, um, yeah, everyone here is a digital. No, it's not true. I've, I'm um, yeah, economy engineer. So I'm from a different uh, department. What uh, I think you, Tom, and for, before Adam said, open, just uh, opens my mind. Uh, um, I, I would like to give a, an extra perspective. Um, it's the same problem here, I believe, in Germany. Uh, this no code, low code, or, or what is the third one? Uh, no code, low code, and something else uh, um, is recognized as a big market, but as well here, it's nearly impossible to find people to work in this area. And uh, the first conference, I think, started in the Corona times, and only some people joined a dozen really and uh, uh, more or less most of the people were from different companies so they didn't know how to um, uh, become more engaged in the topic um, still it's it's a, it's it's a huge market they said about it's about worldwide 20 billion uh, dollar and still growing and I wonder why um, there's uh, not an ex expansion of educating people um, guiding people to this idea of no code, no code. Maybe you don't need the digital nerd, um, natives. Maybe you um, could use some other people like me. I'm not a digital native. I'm not, you know, I use, yeah, I have the yeah, other standards, but uh, I love the area. I love the spirit uh, as you do. And I can feel your spirit. I really enjoy the session. So now I came a bit late, sorry. Uh, wasn't so, yeah, <laughs> different, 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 different uh, problem. So, so I enjoy this. And with this spirit you have, um, uh, maybe the perspective to pull in new people would help. Um, maybe if, um, like the Adam, uh, the chart you um, have shown, um, this is from my perspective something in this, in the bubble of already people who are already close to the 
this uh yeah well, i would explain it in i uh, only know german words uh in this um okay did you however and but a, a lot of people a lot of people would like to enter in this bubble but they don't know how and i think you could find people worldwide you don't need uh, for, uh just people from your area because it's like me i'm very far away and i was quite surprised because you from my perspective your idea is northeast i think from my perspective northeast is finland <laughs> so it's so it's so nice to hear but i, I always had to think it northeast where's northeast why they are in um, england or you are in england yeah or in scotland i wasn't sure okay england yeah so that's what i what i like um, to add and i th see uh, the perspective from me as an outsider i see the yeah these uh the enjoyment of people who are working like bobby she just it's so okay she's yeah she was very uh, enthusiastic uh, it's maybe not the typical way germans are um so i would say i'm not so much a typical german and uh but uh this this idea i'll do focus on um um development on on future projects this is uh this is what you uh what which makes you attractive for people who are not yet in this area mm. maybe no, no I, I think i hope um, i i hope you did understand me it's maybe <laughs> exhausting yeah, th thanks henrik i i think just to kind of uh finish off on that i think that you know if you are in the no code space you kind of it's one of those things you, you have this anchoring you hear no code everywhere and you you end up in little bubbles on on twitter and there's lots of kind of no code uh, twitter bubbles that go around and you talk about things like that but actually to the general public around you know in, in around it's it's still very early doors and i think it it's you know it's only getting bigger and i think what's really for me is is really vital is that there are spaces like this with kind of trusted people who are in it for the right reasons and are trying to develop the sector in in the right way which is why i think you know, it's great that Bonner are involved and uh, some of the software city are involved and and everybody else who comes to these are interested in how this can develop um in 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 in, in the right way but yeah i mean ben you know you, you talk to people and you kind of go yeah you, you think everybody knows about it most people don't know about it you know because to be honest most people in most organizations how much do they know about digital well actually if you look at digital maturity for most organizations it's it's not massive and then no code's just a part of that as well and so i think it's a developing market it's a developing area for lots of people and i think having these spaces and having like i keep saying having good people in this space is really 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 important so you know the more we can develop that i think the better yeah i think <clears throat> thanks Tom. i think the uh, and thanks henrik and, and nice to have you find do you find this through meetup is that is that where you yeah cool um yeah i think uh, just just to add to that i think um uh one of the things so i come from an open source background as, as some people in this room know as william in particular um uh you know i i was a, a massive open source advocate for many many years so coming into the no code space was kind of alien to me in terms of, of the concept of other people owning the things that i was uh, doing and paying subscription fees and all this kind of stuff but the one thing that was hugely in common which is i think a, a bit of an anomaly for me in this in this sort of space is the sense of community i think there's a there's a that actually if you look around at a lot of things that go on no code yes there's a there's a driver there obviously in terms of people have to live and, and there's 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 economies being created but there's a really strong uh if i look at the likes of 100 days no code that kind of thing, there's a really strong community of people who really want to it's early for everyone right we're all still working this stuff out it's still still new there's still every day these tools that we use have got new features coming out they're all you know comp competing with each other there's a million different things you can use and there's just a really great uh for me spirit of of, of sharing and 
and people really kind of uh, um, uh, helping each other out. And that's what actually one of the things that really attracted me to both to no code as a thing to use, but also to the idea that we could actually do that in the Northeast. And that I agree with you, Henrik, it does not have to be um, a UK or a, or a Northeast uh, thing. But on the flip side, uh, especially our regions are very uh, uh, sort of, uh, we like getting together, let's say. And, uh, and I think that on that basis, um, it's, a, it's a really great place for us to actually try and uh, uh, get more people involved, under, help people understand what no code is and, and hopefully, um, become a bit of a, a, a you know, become known a little bit for the fact that that we that we uh, embrace and, and and know no code in the northeast. So, so it all fits everything you both said there is, is super cool in terms of fitting right in with with hopefully the the kind of thinking behind doing this in the first place. So, really great. Does anyone else have any uh, any other questions or or inputs that they would like to 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 give? I think I would just ben. say, um, if I may, um, Please. I think uh, when Henrik was saying uh, that the, one of the problems um, is being able to pull people into this, uh, to the no code space. Um, I think we need uh, maybe to start with, I, I come from a traditional developing background. So I, I'm a um, quote unquote full stack developer and I've been uh solving problems and um uh, what have you with uh traditional methods for quite some time uh so no code is new to me uh but the the stumbling block that i've found with other developers is other developers seeing no code as uh as a as a viable means to uh solve solutions for for uh everyday clients talking outside of uh, quite apart from the voluntary sector um privately speaking with uh with jack a few weeks ago um and uh he and i uh, want to try and center community interest around no code tools specifically so one of those um is webflow which you'll all be uh, familiar with um and i think if we can if we can convince developers that this is a way forwards or even an alternative route i think we'll get more interest uh, from traditional developers. And I think that can spur on growth in the sector and helping things like the voluntary sector and other sectors too. Yeah, 100% agree, Gavin. <clears throat> I think that from a Southern Southwest City perspective, obviously we're, we're here to support the digital sector and tech sector in the, in the widest sense. Um, uh, but I think one of the things that we've identified it's it's tough. With, I mean, no code for all, all we said. People don't know it's it's a massive space, right? I mean, we talk. Yeah, you know, it's a very different conversation. A lot of time talking about Airtable compared to talking about Webflow, right? You're talking about developers, as you're talking about to, to someone that something that anyone can pick up. Webflow is also not the sort of tool I would say that anyone can pick up. As I think um, uh, Jack, you were saying earlier, you've got to have some level of right of of uh, whereas card, for example, actually you can just drop a few images in it. There's this, there's this huge expanse of, of kind of levels that you can work at and the types of things that you can realistically do with no code. Um, but I think that from the developer side of it, um, one of the areas that we're trying to look at, and it's one of the th thoughts behind this, uh, this um, uh, uh, round table that we're planning in December is to actually get some of the more traditional agencies around the table and talk to them about what, and I've been having quite a lot of conversations with them anyway, but I think to, to really understand, um, obviously you've got freelancers and that kind of thing, which I think are, are probably an easier target in a way because it's one mind to change rather than uh, uh, multiple. But I think it, we need to look at it from from all the, all the spaces and trying to do that in a short space of time is difficult because it's such a wide expanse, do you know what I mean? But, mm -hmm. but we definitely want to have those conversations and we want to open up developers. I think there's a massive challenge with traditional developers not thinking almost thinking that it's the stuff for beginners rather than for developers if you see what i mean and and, and, it, and that's it, a... it it does have a bit of a um well certain the developers that i know and work with um they they kind of uh just because they, they don't understand it they haven't really uh looked into it properly but the, there is yeah. that kind of um uh bad reputation associated with no code um and it's uh, it's it's really not deserved. Um, and I think there's uh, there's some work to do in educating uh, developers in that this is this is a, a tool that can really help 
uh, small businesses, especially to uh, road test ideas very quickly uh, at a low cost. Um, just uh, interesting when Tom was talking about the uh, the time banking um, uh, idea and the, the the business hadn't even really given much thought to the idea before going ahead and getting a quote from a developer for, a, for an app that would just be totally um, beyond their needs. Um, and it's, it's no code that can step in and test from these ideas before um, massive investment is put put into them to, to if, if they do indeed work. Um, so I think I think there's a there's a big um, hurdle to to get over to uh, to educate developers that this this is this is a, a growing space and it's a space that can benefit their new and existing clients. Hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. And I think also the cross the multidisciplinary aspect of it, of the fact that, you know, a designer can suddenly do things that a designer couldn't do and a, and, a, and a UX person could be doing things that a UX person couldn't do and a developer can be doing things on a design perspective that they could, you know, there's, there's, there's that, that ability to almost like expand your, uh, what you're able to do really, really, really quickly as well. And I think that's, uh, um, but it, there's there's lots of levels. We were talking to with them. Um, uh, I was talking with Max uh, uh, from 100 Days No Code, and we were looking at because we we're looking at this this concept of the of the the conference. And again, there's loads of different levels, right, of people who 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 can access this. And 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 the question is, where do we do we? And 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 if we do, where do we where do we focus the the most amount of time? And I think part of it is that No Code is actually a, it's a horizontal. It's not a vertical, right? It's a it, it stretches across internal tools makers hobbyists it's uh for enterprise it's for smes it's for it's for voluntary sector organizations it's for, it's for uh, freelancers it's for agencies it's for entrepreneurs etc etc you know and there's this huge kind of uh, um uh, expanse of people who can really benefit from this so it's almost like how do we start getting getting the messages across to each of those uh each of those different different um areas and and, and use it to, to to change change the ecosystem I, I mean i seriously believe it can change the tech sector um and is changing the tech sector for uh, across the board and uh, i think um it's it's interesting times in that sense but yeah so i get off my soapbox now but uh <laughs> um cool but did, sorry was someone no that was just about me, me oh. to say um i'm gonna have sorry, to go Tom. in a second um, no worries if that's all right um Nice to see everybody. Um, nice to meet you all. I'll probably pop back in for another one and not talk. Uh, which, um, but um, like I said, if if anybody's kind of, you've got all my contact details on there, be interested in kind of any more of the things that I'm doing in terms of either no code stuff or just you are doing no code and you want to kind of talk to me about, I could help you out, Tom, on occasion uh, with some of these requests that i'm looking for please look me up i don't know twitter linkedin whatever you want to do or uh email um uh but it's nice to see you all and uh hope you enjoy the rest of your evening hopefully that was at least useful in entertaining if not i don't know um well, it's really it was uh, well, it was brilliant great. Uh, tom really thanks so much for for, for agreeing to do that because i think it's a yeah, as you can see from the conversation afterwards, it's uh, it's uh, it, it's it's a conversation to be had as well as a, a, an understanding again. So yeah, really appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Cool. Thank you all. Right. See ya. Cheers. Bye. Take care. See ya. Tom, did you have uh, sorry, Ben? Did you have something you wanted to mention or say? Uh, I was just going to ask uh, more just a case of like, how do you counteract the shiny toy syndrome? Like, because it seems that there's a new code tool every time you look at the internet and it just makes <laughs> you want to pick up and play around with it. And then you try to like, right, okay, that one's good for that. That one's good for that. But yeah, it's just like the, the, a lot of them compete with one another. And then you'll think, oh, this one's better for that. And then it brings it, another one brings it a new feature. And you're like, oh, well, hang on, that one might be better now. It's just kind of, I don't know. Yeah. I was going to ask him how he counter <laughs> counteracts that because that's the thing, the problem I seem to have a lot of them with a lot of the tools at the moment is just yeah it's, it's good discovering all the new tools but yeah the, uh, it's difficult to keep track i think isn't it that's that's why we're going with no code arcade you know so you got to play play with all the tools that are out there <laughs> yeah but yeah anyone else got any thoughts on that, that i mean from your experience in terms of of how you manage shiny toy syndrome i love the <laughs> i've never heard of that as a syndrome but uh go on with him Sorry, I'm just going to say goodbye.
I'm heading off. Oh, <laughs> all right. Sorry, I didn't see that. <laughs> see, I thought you were putting okay. your hand up to say something. Take care, no, William. No. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye, bye. Yeah, I mean, I think that at the, the at the time at the moment when everything is so new, I think that. I'd say just go with it. You know what I mean? It's like there's there's no no other option than to to, to go a bit shiny toy because there uh, there's so many things to try out. But because uh, you had this, you you kind of went with a dollar and then found some challenges with the business model, right? In terms of yeah, yes, yeah. so, I like I built my MVP on a dollar and it, it, it's great. Like you know the interface and it's really easy to make. And initially, I was trying to get to it with Airtable and I was having issues with that. And then I kind of dropped at Airtable and went with the Darlow's own collections, which is their version of the database. As soon as I did that, I just like, you know, turned turned the key and it was like, you know, great. And I could kind of uh build the thing that I kind of, you know, wireframed and had it had in mind. Um got to a point that I'm pretty happy with. And then yeah, the they've updated their pricing model, um, which they you have a limit on the number of actions you can have, um, which they didn't previously. So when you look through the like the Darlow community, like the um all the, the forums and stuff, like all the Adalo users are in uproar because they think, well, I've got like multiple apps that I've built on your platform that now I'm kind of at the mercy of this. And if I'm limited by the number of actions I've got, like they were doing like action counts and saying, well, I've across my suite of apps that I've built for other clients, um, which they're like paying a retainer for, um, I'm going to be paying like, you know, from £250 a month up to like two grand a month kind of thing. So it's like a huge things so yeah that's kind of one of the things which i have you know i can although i'm a big advocate of no code and i think it's great that i've kind of seen the other side where like you are at the mercy of the platform that you build on kind of thing and if they change their policy or price structure or um their direction then you are kind of at the mercy of that so um so yeah then it makes you think oh well okay what what can i migrate to kind of thing and you know i think a lot of these tools they are great for like a an mvp or a tester so i'm not for one suggesting that like you know i'm gonna exceed the the number of actions that i've got within a plan but it's just it's, it's things like that which you need to take in, into consideration as well um but yeah there's, there's so many tools but then it's just with each one they've all got their own slightly different learning curves and different caveats and things that you need to take into consideration like even from the terminology so a dollar collections instead of databases little things like that and it's like little nuances which you you need to like learn for each one i guess but but yeah yeah, I think the only the only tool that I've seen that really sort of that seems to be built really to scale almost is is Bubble, right? It, it, most most of the rest of the tools are working on like numbers of records and stuff, and that's literally working on like a traditional developer stack in the sense of the amount of computing power you use, basically. Um, which I think is an interesting model, but uh, but but yeah, it's uh, it's uh, I think I think, but even there, I think like I mean, there's a few that I've used that have completely changed them. Stack F, for example, when I first started using it, I had a completely different pricing and business model effectively when I first started using it and it completely shifted it and changed it into, into something completely different. I think it, it, it falls back on that thing of the fact that everyone's actually, the tools, are, as much as the, the things people build are, are new and, and, and exciting and, and whatever, but the, the tools themselves, that, that they're still massively in early stages and, and, and uh uh, so yeah, as you say, you're at the at the mercy, I guess, until uh, until the, until that settles down, as it were. Um, but yeah, don't think there's an easy solution at the minute, right? I mean, it's kind of it, it it's the get massive learning curve or something with Bubble or or spending a fortune to get a custom system developed or take the hits in terms of some of the some of the downsides of the mm -hmm. of the easy tools. The other side is they are quick to, to iterate as well. So it's like you can always pick up another tool, quickly learn it in like a few weekends and then build it again all over again from scratch, you know. So I suppose that's the other the other thing, which is pretty fun and exciting as well. Learn another tool. Get playing, get playing. Right, good stuff. Anyone in, wanna mention anything else or we call it a day for this week, this week, this month. Not doing them weekly yet, sorry, just to be really clear. <laughs> um uh gavin and jack if you if you're thinking about uh, i'd love to do some more stuff with webflow because i've been discovering it and falling in love with it over the last few months and i think um uh give me a shout um to to maybe have a chat about what we can do there i know uh, jack i think you've been speaking to steve as well at, at software city but i think uh 
I'd be keen if there's an, any any help that if you're looking at getting a community together or whatever, any help that, that I or and or software that you could uh, could provide in terms of of support and that. I know you're doing something in London, but uh, I don't get down there enough anymore. So, um, but yeah, uh, thanks so much for coming. Um, and I uh, hope that was useful. And uh, I'll be sending out email in the next few, the next couple of days. The new, the next uh, talk, although we haven't got a, a speaker confirmed uh, as an individual yet. Um, it's more because there's actually a couple of people. So um, uh, we've got the the new uh, the events up on in our traditional no code style. We uh, we tie in Eventbrite with our CRM system, which is built in Airtable that pushes things using Whale Sync into Webflow. Uh, so the, uh, the the next event is up online already um, for people to sign up on the website. Um, and uh, I'll uh, I'll put yeah as I say more word out about the uh, the round table and a couple of the other events that we've got running over the next little while. But uh, thanks again for coming, and uh, hopefully see you all again soon. Have a lovely rest of the evening. You too. Great. Thanks. Cheers, you, folks. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thanks very much.